So what I told you was true from a certain point of view. So, Mike, in previous shows, you've talked a lot about um, Forces of Destiny. I think we both are big fans of that that whole grouping. I know uh, we've covered the toys before, and you've mentioned the comics a little bit. And I think I think it's a very short thing. It's very concise. It's a couple important points in there. Um, but I think if we cover them a little bit better for people, they might actually kind of kind of want to see some of the graphics. So we'll throw that up, and we'll describe some of the books and what they look like. So could you just give a quick overview of what the Forces of Destiny uh, comic series was? Yeah, uh, it was uh, it was a 2018 five issue series that focused around the girls, the main the main girls essentially around uh, Star Wars that had their own little uh, shorts that were on YouTube, and then they ended up on Disney XD, and then now they're of course they're on Disney Plus. Um, so they were tied together. So the comics were extensions of the episodes. And they are uh, there's so the five of them there's Ahsoka and um, Padme they're combined in one, and then there's a Ray she's got her own issue there's a Leia she's got her own issue Hera has her own issue and then there's the two sisters um, Paige and Rose and Paige and Rose yep yeah. um, so there's the there's regular issues for those they're actually really cool just the regular issues are great they're not Marvel they're IDW. Um, so that, and so that's, that's sort of a weird thing. So IDW is putting out a few comics. They're putting out the, um, Star Wars adventures. They're putting out the Vader's castle. They're about to put out a one shot for the Mandalorian. Um, and then they, they, they did these. Um, and like I said, these were meant to go along to extend the stories of the female characters of Star Wars. Now the episodes, there were other characters. Sabine had an episode, but she does not have a comic. Um, for instance, that's just one off the top of my head that I can think of. I Which think is really that, interesting because in that yeah. Sabine, isn't there is a Mandalorian in that Sabine episode too, which yes. is a very, very cool co- uh, character. And it'd be awesome if they ever showed up in the actual would. thing. It, it would be great if they, they would finally do a comic to go sort of extend that out a little bit too. That would, would be really – if they um, did that. With they, the IDW that, thing too, if I recall correctly, and correct me if I'm wrong, but with IDW, what had happened was Marvel had made a deal because IDW was doing children type of books already – Children's adult yep. books, I guess, like ponies. They're, they had great success in a lot of this, so they had started to move the Marvel line over there as far as, was it Spider-Man Adventure? Something to that effect. And it had been doing pretty good attracting to kids and selling at a price point of, I think it was $4 a book, which is tough to sell a $4 kid book. But it was. Yes. So then they decided to, you're right, they decided to move it over. And this is the first time, I don't think they did because Adventures didn't come out before this, did it? I think this came out no. before Adventures, correct? this was first. This was first, this was but first. not by much. Not by yeah. much. They, they were... Much. Almost back to back. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then like some of the stuff, some of the stuff that was first in there was first continuity for it because it becomes an extension yes. for, for Disney. Like there's definitely yep. some firsts in that. And, but then, there yeah, are. so going, there was a there's bunch one, of, there's one really important one that we should get to. Yeah. But as so, well. so there, so, but go on. So they, it wasn't just, it was a very small, they were testing the market too, right? Because I think they the were. Print, the print room was really small. That it was like twelve thousand something. I, like and that. And I think 12. you know they were testing to see if they could get a girl market. I think for comics, and obviously we yeah. all know that that comics are very geared towards, or at least the 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 demographic for comics is very much boys and men. Um, yeah, and do so you as think we, it was just a girl market, or do you think it was just a child market? Definitely, I think trying to do some awareness for boys to read about girl heroes, strong. Mm-hmm girl characters. These are already established strong female characters. Um, so have boys be excited about girl characters and then also have girls have something that they can relate to. I think I think it was a, a fantastic idea, both from the cartoon I, standpoint I as well. Um, so I, I think her. yeah, I think that's part I think that's part of it, but we gotta remember like Disney it, Disney isn't exactly like Kenner or like, you know, Lucas where they were one sided with a lot of stuff. They have huge marketing departments and everything else. And I think one thing they wanted to do was get the same market share that Pony was getting out of there. Okay. So where you like you directly market to girls, if boys sort of pick it up, that's good too. If adults pick it up, that's even better. And I think that's kind of what they're doing because because Mike will cover it. But yeah, go over some of these covers real quickly. Go over what yeah. they did. And, and the other thing too, just to go along with your point real fast is look, we're we're dudes sitting here talking about girl books and you know it, when well, I think that, about my favorite yeah. characters from modern Star Wars, it's the girls. It's Sabine. It's Ahsoka. It's Jyn yeah. Erso. It's those characters. Those are those they are the ones I've been latching on to. And I want, I want to read more stuff on these characters. I want to see more cartoons based around them or movies or shows or whatever. But, you Rosie. know, regardless. I think Rosie, we're just, Ray, Dr. Afra. 
Yeah, Dr. Afra. Absolutely. All coming in. That's oh man, cool. absolutely. And there's and they're such well-rounded characters. They're really good. They're not forced. They feel organically strong. Um, I, I think I think they've they've been fantastic. And a lot of that is Filoni that we talked about in prior episodes. Um, so, so back the, to the, the covers, covers though. Yeah, yeah. So we had the regular. We had the regular A's, and then we had a B cover. For yeah. So the, the B, B cover B is is a really cool uh, set. Essentially, um, they are. Um, they're very, very stylized, sort of have a mod feel to them. The, 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 the backgrounds are almost all white, um, so they're really stark and beautiful. The, the art was from um, an artist whose name escapes me that I'm going to look up right now to make sure I, get, I say it right. Sure. Um, but the, the cool thing about them, though, is, the, is at San Diego Comic-Con that year and other cons, in 2018, they did virginized versions of the B covers. Um, now, what's also cool about those is the front is a virgin version of the B cover, and the back is the B cover with the trade dress on it. Um, but if, but it has the barcode and, and other things that a, that the back of an IDW book would have. Um, oh, I didn't so, know that. Yeah. So when you see them, if you're seeing pictures on eBay or wherever, and you're seeing someone show the back cover, you know, be careful not to confuse the back cover with the front cover because the front cover should be completely virginized. It should just be the art. And then the, the back cover should essentially look like what the B cover looked like. Um, now these, these are, they're rare. I mean, there was definitely, there were definitely a lower print run. There's some debate about what the print runs were on them. Many people think 500 other people think a thousand. Um, I know that IDW's minimum is a thousand. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that if these were done directly for Disney and SDCC that they didn't get some specific deal that allowed I, them to print fewer. But I'm think, guessing a I thousand. Think, well, I think they were on the IDW booth, and I know that they advertised it at WonderCon too. But I do know this. I know that those books sold out really quickly, and I think surprisingly so. And this is where the popularity comes into it. I do know the numbers roughly for all the books is somewhere around 12,000. Um, yeah. And I do know that it was underordered, and I do know that – you know, I mean, the Ahsoka Padawan book, you can't, that one, you can find some of these still on shelves. Like, you can still find the Leia. You can find the Leia B cover, which is her with the, uh, on the Tom Tom, right? Mm -hmm. She's on the Tom yeah. Tom on the B cover. You can find those still every once in a while. You can find the hair one, you can't, you pretty, I, well, maybe you can. Different market than I'm in. You haven't been able to find that one for years. Uh, right. The the page one was very low. It was. Run. And I'm not sure that that one's hard. a lot of these books. Are, I'm not going to call them a ghost because you can find them, but they're they're hard to find. Like people who collectors who wanted them had gotten in there early and gotten them. And I think if I'm not incorrect, the Ahsoka one was either the first or second, but it was one of the first ones. And I think because it was, people picked that one off the shelf, not knowing that it's going to be like the first, uh, you know, Ahsoka in continuity, but like just because people love that character, right? So then. Right. Then that has, cotton, in continuity or in canon? Well, it's yeah. Well, because IDW. So how it works is like we know <laughs> that we know. Yeah. So we know. We, Rabbit yeah, hole. Yeah. Yeah. Here it goes. <laughs> so here it goes. This is this is, how, this is how it works. This is how it works. The Clone Wars book where Ahsoka first shows up is a Dark Horse comic. The only thing that is canon in that, as far as story arcs go is Son of Death Mirror. We all know that, right? That's very... Now, that book, if you ever... If anybody ever... I know a lot of people don't open that book, but a lot of people have read that book and before. That storyline didn't happen. The, the the Clone Wars 1, that did not happen on the TV show. That story isn't even referenced on the TV show as far as I know. I, is it referenced right. at all? I don't think it's even referenced. Um, it hasn't been referenced anyplace else. So that would still fall as non-canon, even if they redid it. The best you could get is Heir to the Empire of Thrawn off of that, which, well, I mean, I guess it's a little different because Heir to the Empire of Thrawn is more like, you know, that character got completely changed around and everything else. The Ahsoka in Clone Wars 1 is the Ahsoka that shows up in Clone Wars TV show and becomes canon. But Ahsoka, like when they gave the rights to IDW with this girl line, it was to introduce these characters pretty much for the first time. And besides Leia didn't, Hera didn't because the Kanan came out. Um, but people love that that B cover of the Hera, that, and it's mm -hmm. a slick cover, and, and so is the one in tens. Because you'll talk about the one tens in a minute. So really, but, the way people should be viewing the the, the comic really is kind of like Batman Adventures twelve, where Harley Quinn is 
first appears, but it's not her first canon appearance or her first her first in continuity appearance is Batman, the Batman Harley Joker book that came out later. That's her first canonical appearance. So that's sort of what we're saying here is that the Clone Wars one is like Batman Adventures 12. And this Forces of Destiny, Ahsoka Padme yeah. is really her first in continuity. Yeah. Maybe did they um, say that BA twelve wasn't the first? Like I mean, they have said that it's not canon for. I mean, they were very strict about. Clones. It's really not her first appearance anyway. <laughs> it's yeah. technically like her third or fourth appearance, yeah, but yeah, yeah. in a comic book, yeah. Um, yeah but it's a but similar so, idea. So yeah, I mean, what it is, it, what it breaks down is to like in, it's it's more colluded than or than uh, heir to the empire versus the first Thrawn, where Thrawn right. number one is technically his first appearance in continuity canon. Okay, that's it. It's his first. It is. It's not debatable. Um, where hers, the only debate I guess you could say is like it is the exact same character. So like that book's definitely cool and it's definitely something to have. Clone Wars one, but technically it's not the first canon book. Like the first canon book is ID the IDW book that has her and Padma yep. on it. And under and, under the under the Disney umbrella, uh, with a cartoon, with toy support, and all kinds of marketing, um, yeah. it is the, absolutely in canon. Yeah. Yeah, the, and by the, the way, that's a, fa- that's a fan favorite book, mind you, because like this isn't, I mean, this is no secret. Like fans know about that book because the one in 10, I mean, that book is like a hundred and some dollars. I mean, and yeah, I don't think, I don't let's, think well, let's get, let's get back, let's, let's get back to that, right? Yeah. Okay. So the, the artist for the B cover slash the San Diego Comic Con one is Elsa. I got I have to make sure I yeah. say this right. It's a French name, Charretier. Um, and they're beautiful. I mean, they're very, very stylized. They're very cool. And then you have what they call the animation cell variants, which were the those one in ten. Real cool. And those are really cool. And if we're talking about, if we're just using the Ahsoka Padme issue just as a reference point, the regular issue, just the A cover, is somewhere between a ten and twenty dollar book. The B cover is about a twenty to thirty dollar book. The San Diego Comic Con is somewhere between a sixty and eighty dollar book. Yeah, and the one in ten is is more like a hundred dollar to a hundred and fifty dollar book, depending yes. on what, so what day think, you're buying. Yeah, I mean, yeah, depending on what day you're buying it, I think you're right. I think the the the, I think the San Diego book or the the Virgin book is probably around fifty dollars easy for that. And then like, like it is just not a lot. So when they come up, every time they come up, I'd assume they do better. I mean, I haven't looked at it in a while, but every time they come up, they seem to do better and better. And like, I mean, I mean, because mind you, these are books that I have. I mean, they're not like, and it's not like I have. You know, I mean, they're books that I have. I'm not planning on selling them, but they're books that I have because I love them. Came out, and, and like, that's same. that's the good point is that you know a lot of the collectors, especially with Star Wars, once we get those, once we find those, we normally tend to hold on to them because it, we're completionists as far as our our Star Wars collection goes. So a lot of times we'll hunt these books, and when we find them, we want to hold on to them. We don't want to resell them, so you don't see a lot of them hitting the market. It was hard. My comic book shop, who which my as in the lcs i go to usually gets every variant i mean they get all the variants they get the hundred variant they get the whatever variant because they own multiple shops wow that's awesome. lucky dog. that's awesome yeah right that's, so I'm this is it. but this is why i didn't pay ten dollars for that because i had to buy it online which really ticked me off because even my shop didn't get that because they actually only had you know i don't wednesday warrior but i get there early because i talk to everybody and hang out but by 10 o'clock, they had two copies and nobody had pulled it or three copies. In, it just in the one store I was in, I think they had a couple copies of the other one, but they didn't hit 10. They didn't hit 10. You know what I mean? Who hit 10 on that? Yep. It's 12,000. 12,000 total on that thing. Nobody hit 10. One point that I want to make is, is sort of a in, in, tam, in tandem with, with what Solo said is that Star Wars, Star Wars collectors don't relinquish books. We just, we just don't. We, we keep them for ourselves. And as a result, the books that we're talking about, they're already hot. I mean, these books are all th- – They become hard to find. Are, they become hard to find. They really are. Like a lot of them become yeah. hard to find. People don't relinquish them. Like I mean, even, even if the print run wasn't low on some of these, like you made it two cons – Back in like seventeen, eighteen, with with whatever books you had for IDW for a small publishing company, for a yeah. kitty book, like it was gone. Yeah. I don't. I mean, like that's and, there and was no cel- you, There was no celebration that year, so they didn't push yep. out a celebration. Yep. Right. You know, it definitely didn't make it out to the Midwest cons. It didn't make it yep. out to the East Coast cons. It. Uh, I mean, like, it, where where are you gonna get that? I mean, it just it's something that collectors like. It's like the pin. And keep, let's keep in mind also, it's a kids. Let's keep in mind it's a kid's book too, and kids that actually bought it probably destroyed most of them. 
I mean, oh, they read yeah. them like they're meant to be read by a kid. Yeah. So you'd, you'd think that about a quarter of the copies that got purchased by actual kids, they're, they're not in collectible condition anymore. So, And with that being said, we know there's people, but we also do know there's people out there who bought a stack of them. Sure. I did. Like, hey, I bought 10 of them. Yeah. I bought, yeah. <laughs> just well, so I could get the variant. Stuff. But so yeah. there's, you can find them every once in a while and you can find them places. But like if you see them and you'll, you know, uh, if you're just listening, you're not seeing it. We are going to put up all the covers so you can see all the covers. There's not a bad cover between it. Every no, they're cover, beautiful. No, they're all gorgeous. Every cover, even the A covers, even yeah. the A covers are gorgeous. Every cover sought after. I mean, sought after. So you, you're going to have to hunt. Like if you want to collect these, you're going to have to hunt. It's a great series to collect. The storylines are great, and I don't think it's going to get old. And I think years from now, people are going to remember because kids did. I mean, we were put on. I don't know where everybody else's LCSs were, but they were put in the kids section. They were, and that was kind of part of the deal with IDW was it was supposed to be put in the mm -hmm. LCS's kid section, not put in the general section where everything else went. So these books were there, and a lot of those kid sections are, uh, I mean, new st new stands are kind of what it looks like, you know, flopped through, kids played mm -hmm. with, everything else. So well, to find that's, out that's good though, and I think that's a very key element to Star Wars. That's how we grew up. That's mm -hmm. that's what made us to where we are today in our passion for star wars and we have to keep giving that to the children of today to spread and continue this love of star wars and, and this love of collecting this love of the reading the love of yeah. the toys that's how we continue this on with our next generation you don't go buy a super bird and park it in your garage and never drive it that's right. silly. You right. go buy a Superbird and you drive it. You go buy a Ferrari. You drive it. Why? Yeah. Because it, it shows the passion and the love. Same way with these books. Same way with the toys. So what if there's one in 100? Some of those got to get played with so that yeah. later on, those kids grow up and go, yeah, I played with it. I wish I'd have kept it. But, man, the memories are unbeatable. I will tell you that the one, the so I don't yeah. have all the B covers. I definitely don't have all the Virgin covers. Uh, I don't actually think I have the Soka Virgin cover at all. I have the the Hera one because I really like that one because I thought the it's kind of I actually didn't like not to knock the artist, not my style of art for the B covers and for the other ones. So besides, I think the Leia B cover because I think the Tauntaun is funny, uh, and Hera as the Virgin because I thought that was really cool. The only thing I have are the cells and. I, I don't know what the prices on the cells are, but I know there's not a lot of them. And I know people started getting onto them after they came out. So those mm -hmm. ones probably, I'm glad I got them when I did. And the A covers, because I thought the A covers were actually and there's pretty some, good. And there's some trickle down. Yeah. I there's mean, some trickle like, down too, now that everyone's gone crazy for the Estoco one. Mm -hmm. Now they yeah. all want the other ones too. Yeah, yeah. So there's some of that happening, happening yeah. so which I is great. I mean, I, I, think, I think they deserve it. I think too, yeah. I think when you see them, when you see these covers, like, and you'll see them, you know, we're putting up the illustrations, but even if you have to come and, and, and look them up, you know, the forces of destiny, five books, check them out. Like it's very different art between a cover B cover. Like it's a very different style, but like a cool style that still follows along. And then the, the, the cell covers are yep. kind of a cleaner version of the a cover. I don't know. I just like it, whatever. That's why I bought them. Cause I like the way it looked. Plus my kids, my kids watched the forces of destiny thing. So I was like, Hey, I'm buying everything that the kids like. Cause one day they can have some comics to read when they're not completely tearing them all apart. But since there was only like two copies, I didn't give them to them ever because, you know, they'll tear those apart in like a second. And then, sure. then they're like, go get me another one, dad. And you're like, well, where the heck am I going to find one? Because <laughs> I think the A cover ended up being like yeah. $10 like two weeks later, man. I'm not paying $10. He was bad enough as $4. For yep. that. <laughs> you know, I'm not paying $10 for that garbage. Keep it. You're not yeah, tearing it apart. True. So, I mean, but that's good. Well, so, hey, hey, Solo guys, brings up another good point. Well, really quick before that, let me tell you, if you're listening to this, if you're watching just, it, whatever, and you want to, and you want us to talk about another series too, and go into it, like, look, they may not, we're not about money. We're just about trying to tell you what the series are about and how cool some of the stuff is. So like, just, if there's a series, you don't understand how it worked. You didn't understand. We love, we like love that. all of it. We read it. The odds are between the three of us. We probably <laughs> we love all of it. it. So we can tell you yeah. what's in it. We can, we can tell you what are cool about it. We can tell you stories and how we picked it up. Um, we could probably dig through. I can't dig through those boxes. And I don't like, care if it's hot or if it's not. I don't care if it's the. I don't care if it's the fifty cent bin stuff. It doesn't matter to me. I like well, it probably you know just what? as much you know as the hundred dollar version. Yeah, maybe we'll, I got the maybe same we'll, problem. Maybe we'll bring this one up. Uh, maybe we'll bring this up too later because you brought up a cool a series that I love, and I don't know that everybody read it, but like IDW also did, and and I don't think this is a kid book at all. But like Vader's Castle, 
and it's a lot it, Vader's castle and we can get into yeah we'll do, we'll do that at a different time but like it's a cool story it's and then they did Vader's castle returns I think there's actually now that I think about it there might mm-hmm. be a like first appearance type thing in that too but whatever I mean who know, who can follow what a first appearance is anymore anyhow but there's like, some there's, really rare variants yeah. for that too no yeah so well the, but the variants the, the variants were weird how they came out and I think there's three or four of them and some of the artists and some of the people that wrote into that are, are key down. So we'll go into that a little bit more in depth. Cause I think it ends up being like 12 issues, which is a little bit more in depth. I don't want to get everything confused because star Wars is confusing enough, no. but so yeah, I think what was, but yeah, with forces, I mean, it was great. Check out those covers. If you guys find them, if you're out there roaming, go ahead. If you, if you get, if you're completionist, we're sorry. 